As technology and human innovation evolve, scientists and archaeologists discover more and more about the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries from around the world. Scientists discover unusual low-frequency radio waves in space. Scientists have studied fast radio bursts, or FRBs, for years, offering many solutions as to what may be causing them, from aliens to colliding black holes. Though recently, radio waves of a much lower frequency have been found, throwing a spanner in the works. Researchers from McGill University and members of Canada's CHIME FRB collaboration have found fast burst radio waves at just 110 MHz, compared to the previous all-time low of 300 MHz. This huge difference eliminates certain sources from the ongoing research and speculation, otherwise low-frequency emissions would simply be absorbed. Some have suggested such a low frequency means a source that is close to Earth. Another piece of the puzzle is an apparent three-day delay between the apparent emission and their detection by telescope. The leading theories suggest that these FRBs are similar to gamma-ray bursts, the universe's most powerful intense explosions. Another suggestion is that they are similar to radio pulsars. These are radio pulses that come from a spinning neutron star. Whilst there is still plenty to uncover on this topic, astrophysicist Bing Zhang says that the mechanisms of producing FRBs are greatly narrowed down. Perhaps in the not-too-distant future, we will have some definitive answers. Chinese scientists build an artificial lightning rocket. Weather is one of the most dangerous and unpredictable parts of living on planet Earth. While cloudless, sunny days are beautiful and peaceful, uncontrollable weather events such as tornadoes, hurricanes, floods and even lightning have caused some of the most lethal disasters when it comes to human casualties. And although it might seem that controlling these elements is a hopeless cause, that is now not the case at least when it comes to lightning. Scientists all over the world, from the United States, France, Japan and Brazil, have worked successfully on projects designed to divert and control lightning and allow it to funnel safely and harmlessly into the ground, rather than causing devastating fires or striking individuals directly. Now, it seems that China has joined this league with a breakthrough lightning diversion tactic of their own. According to the China Meteorological Administration, Damages from lightning in the country exceed what is the equivalent of 120 million US dollars, in addition to the victims that are wounded or worse due to lightning strikes. China's recent experiments were mainly focused on lightning mitigation measures in the Shandong province in the east, where lightning and thunder events are especially common and costly. The region also has a high level of weather infrastructure and forecasting towers with an advanced radar network that created an optimal setting for the experiments to take place. A group of scientists with the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Chinese Academy of Meteorological Sciences used weather rockets that were launched into the air in order to guide lightning safely into the ground in a specific, predetermined location. The rockets were attached to the ground with a copper wire that attracted the trajectory of the lightning and allowed it to funnel to the earth. This artificial lightning diversion using weather rockets was a smashing success, and it was found that launching the weather rockets into the air would make the unpredictable lightning immediately strike into the assigned location. This was a breakthrough for lightning safety for China and especially Shandong province as it means that rather than remain vulnerable to deadly bolts which can strike anywhere at any time, meteorologists can essentially control when and where they strike. This technology can be employed in fields or other high-risk areas where the occurrence of lightning could be costly in terms of both life and property. And although the driving force behind this project was protection of the aforementioned lives and property, it remains to be seen whether the generation of this artificial lightning could be used to create renewable power of some sort, or whether experiments in that vein will even continue. However, whether or not the experiments continue to develop into anything more, or if the technology is immediately applied to areas that are at risk for lightning damage, the videos that were released by the China Meteorological Administration of the rocket with copper conducting wire attached shooting into the sky and seemingly to magically create and control lightning were nothing short of breathtaking. And it seems the future of natural disaster prevention 
could be equally exciting. A massive lake in Antarctica has vanished from satellite pictures. Overnight, an enormous lake in Antarctica has mysteriously vanished from all satellite images. A massive lake in the Amory Ice Shelf in East Antarctica seemed to drain overnight, and researchers are left scrambling for answers. The lake was covered by ice for the majority of its existence until mid-2019, when the majority of the ice melted. During this time, the lake held somewhere between 600 and 750 million cubic meters of water. This lake held more water than the Sydney Harbour in Australia. To the shock and amazement of researchers and scientists around the globe, the 600 to 750 million cubic meters of water simply vanished. When the discovery was made, researchers began scouring through historical satellite images to find the exact date the water had vanished. Images provided by NASA were the main source of information used during this inquiry. While no one knows for certain how this amazing mystery came to fruition, the leading theory is that the water somehow returned to the ocean. The prominent hypothesis for how this occurred can be explained by the existence of ice shelves. The theory follows that at the bottom of the lake was a shelf of ice which served as a sort of plug drain for the lake. The ice shelf cracked under the mounting pressure of the water within the lake and when the shelf cracked, the water was released through the gap which flowed back into the ocean. Through extensive research, it was found that the lake went from being filled to entirely drained within three days. Roland Warner, who served as a leading researcher on the phenomenon, claimed, We believe the weight of water accumulated in this deep lake opened a fissure in the ice shelf beneath the lake, a process known as hydrofracture, causing the water to drain away to the ocean below. Members of the research team collectively agree that global warming may cause more ice shelves to break shortly. An excerpt found in the published study regarding the drained lake stated, Antarctic surface melting has been projected to double by 2050, raising concerns about the stability of other ice shelves. Since this astonishing discovery, the lake appears to be slowly filling back up with water. It has been theorized that the ice shelf froze back over which has allowed water to be retained in the once-drained lake. The Earth is swallowing up more carbon from its atmosphere than scientists previously thought. Leading scientists from Cambridge University and NTU Singapore have recently made a groundbreaking discovery in the field of climate change. A shocking new discovery has found that collisions of tectonic plates below the Earth's surface are drawing massive amounts of carbon from the atmosphere at levels we never thought possible. While we have had the understanding that slow-moving tectonic collisions hold the power of removing carbon from our atmosphere, the true potential of this phenomenon was not yet fully appreciated. The areas in which carbon is sucked into the Earth's interior are known as subduction zones. These zones are found at the point where tectonic plates meet under the Earth's crust. Carbon is drawn into the zones and pushed down into the center of the Earth, where they are essentially trapped. Stefan Farsang, a leading scientist studying this groundbreaking news, has stated, We currently have a relatively good understanding of the surface reservoirs of carbon and the fluxes between them, but know much less about Earth's interior carbon stores, which cycle carbon over millions of years. The team's findings, published in Nature Communications, quickly gained the attention of geologists, meteorologists, and climate experts across the globe. Their peer-reviewed journal suggested that two-thirds of the carbon that is absorbed in these subduction zones does not re-emerge to the surface in the form of volcanoes. This contrasted the widely held belief that most carbon that was absorbed by the Earth was quickly released back into the atmosphere. This discovery may open the door for new opportunities in combating climate change. Using this uncovered potential to reduce the carbon in the atmosphere could prove to be an extraordinary leap forward in the fight against climate change. By focusing attention on this area, we may be able to obtain a more comprehensive understanding of the life cycle of carbon on Earth. Unlocking the clues as to how we can take advantage of these processes may be the missing piece to eliminating the threat of climate change. This discovery has also highlighted the fact 
that there is much we do not know about the Earth's interior carbon stores. These reservoirs are commonly referred to as deep carbon stores. Acknowledging this lack of understanding directs attention to the issue. Furthermore, recognizing the potential that we may lie in wait allows for more funding to be guided towards the research of these stories. Uncovering the true capabilities found within the Earth's subduction zones has created this ripple effect that we are only seeing the beginning of. As more interest is directed towards this topic, we may find more funding and possibly more amazing discoveries. So far, plate subduction is the only known natural pathway for carbon to reinstate back into the Earth's interior. Expanding our understanding of the process is crucial to mitigating the health and environmental risks that increased carbon has caused within the atmosphere. The bulk of the ongoing research into subduction zones is focused on understanding how they operate and how their function can be optimized. To expand on this research, manageable replications have been made to observe. These replications involve creating a controlled area in which high pressures and temperatures are created to mimic natural subduction zones. A diamond anvil is used to exert extreme levels of pressure onto an item or surface area, and the anvil is subsequently heated by an external source to accurately produce results that would be found in subduction zones. These intricate replicas have yielded successful results as they can produce comparable results that would be expected in nature. As we dive further into the field of subduction zones, we may just find the turning point necessary for reversing the damage of climate change as we know it. Female octopuses throw things at irritating males. Animals have fascinating behavioral patterns. Often we might find ourselves surprised by how much we share with creatures of all walks of life. A recent study has concluded that female octopuses have a short temper with unwanted suitors and tend to get a little aggressive if it means that male octopuses will back off from trying to mate them. It is important to note that this study, which is still new, has not been peer-assessed by fellow scientists and researchers yet, which is a very crucial part of the process of confirming scientific research as fact. It is a pre-print scientific paper. The research also revolved around octopus females in captivity, which might affect how they behave more so than they would in the wild. The investigation showed that female octopuses, once agitated by males, will pick up any surrounding debris, be that algae, silt, seashells, or anything throwable, and will propel them toward the male, which holds their disfavor. In the research paper, the scientists wrote, Some throws appear to be targeted on other individuals and play a social role, as suggested by several kinds of evidence. Some throws were directed differently from beneath the arms and such throws were significantly more likely to hit other octopuses. It's interesting to discover how different species females react to unwanted mating rituals, but to throw objects at a male in frustration is probably one of the most blunt ways for a female to state her disinterest. The act of having debris thrown at them makes male octopuses flee away from the female they are pursuing back into their safe spaces and the strategy does seem effective for females who do not want to mate as it successfully does frighten away their male counterparts. For this investigation, octopuses were taken from the Australian east coast. The octopus tetricus, to be precise, in large quantities and proceeded to be placed in captivity to be examined. In the past, scientists have noted that octopuses tend to fling objects at one another but it is only with this new research paper that it has been confirmed that the majority of these debris flingers are female. Whether these female octopuses throw debris solely due to the reason of not wanting to mate with specific males or whether there is more to it is still uncertain. But it is believed that it has something to do with mating rituals and the female octopuses' distaste. Though, as stated previously, it might also have something to do with social roles and a potential social hierarchy in octopuses. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.